Evening, everybody. Welcome to webinar 20, if you can believe that. So we are looking at, oh, we've got nearly 100 people in the room. That went fast. So welcome to webinar 20. Um, put in the chat um, who you are, how you are, what you've had for your tea, um, and where in the world are you? Welcome to everybody who is joining us from all over the world. We've heard there from um, Egypt, from Nigeria and from Stockport on sea. So we know people are joining us uh, from all over the place. And tonight we have with us 20 guests. So I'm not going to introduce them at this point. They're going to each introduce themselves as they talk. But you might be able to see uh, it might be a slightly different view for you tonight because we have so many guests with us. Um, tonight is the big 20. There's no particular theme, there's no particular topic tonight, if you like. Tonight we're going to be linking um, social work to the number 20. And that's because tonight we are celebrating 20 webinars. This is our 20th Wednesday night webinar and we are delighted at that. When we first started these webinars we had absolutely no idea that they were going to be as popular as they are and that we would get to 20 sessions and um, 20 even though we're celebrating the fact we've got to 20 it doesn't mean we're ending here we've still got loads of sessions to go we've still got lots of sessions planned but if you have been attending and I know that some people have attended every single webinar. Our first guest speaker tonight is here because she has attended all 20 webinars. And there's the 20 webinars in front of you. We've had so far, and I tried to do a little bit of adding up as well earlier in terms of how many people we have in the room with us. But we've had um, about 7,500 live attendances. Now, obviously, some people have attended more than one webinar, so that's not 7,500 people, but we have had 7,500 live attendances at the webinars. And we've had more than 27,000 watchbacks on YouTube so far. That's phenomenal. I want to really congratulate the team that have been working with me on these webinars, because as a group of people who've just come together to try and put something in during the pandemic to help us all keep connected I think this is something to really celebrate and so that's why tonight is a celebration as you know we love to hear your feedback we like getting questions from you and we love to get suggestions about what you would like to cover our webinars focus on theory and reflection but around that, we can pretty much do anything, any topic, anything that you want to do. So we do love to hear from you. Get in touch. The email address is there and our hashtag is also there. We uh, love to see feedback like this. This was feedback left earlier. I don't know if Lynn is in the audience. Maybe if you are, you can stick your hand up or put your, uh, something in the chat. But earlier on today, Lynn left this message saying, I'm really looking forward to tonight. It's like a coffee catch up with like minded people. It's friendly, informative, inspiring, creative, and it's a regular day in my diary. And we really love to see feedback like that. But tonight especially is like a coffee catch up with like minded people. We're not going to talk about a particular area of theory, but it's a coffee catch up with guests that we have invited for a particular reason all hanging around the number 20. So each of us as a team is going to tell you one thing about the number 20 that connects us with social work and then we're going to go into our guests and as I said to you we have 20 panellists tonight which is amazing and therefore we've only got five minutes for each speaker. But what I'm going to share with you, I did wonder, shall I share this? Should this maybe have even gone into the shame webinar? I don't know. But the 20 that I'm going to share with you is that when I was 20 years old and a social work student in, I think it would have been the second year of my studies um, then. Uh, so it's a very long time ago. I failed an assignment on applying theory to social work practice and that failed assignment, which I did get the opportunity to resubmit, that failed assignment gave me the um, kind of motivation to learn more about theory and practice and it fueled a real desire in me to help make theory and reflection accessible and understandable. So that's my what I was thinking about when I had to think about the number 20. And we're going to ask Kat now about her number 20. 
Hi, everybody. Um, so 20 for me relates to 20 months ago when I started my second year of my degree and my 70 days placement in a child protection team. Um, coming over from adults and going into children's was quite daunting, but actually I had the feeling that I'd come back home. Um, and so I've just finished my degree. I get my results next week and I've started working back in child protection. Thank you. Thank you. Kat. Thanks, Kat. And another member of the team now will go over to Chris for Chris's number 20. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, 20 years ago, uh, a close friend of mine said to me, oh, you should be a social worker because I was helping her sort out some personal problems that she was having. I told her not to be ridiculous. Um, and, and actually, I can't quite believe that the same as Kat, I'm about to get my final results and qualify as a social worker. Maybe she knew what she was talking about. Thanks, Chris. And we know Kat and Chris get their results, I think, uh, maybe next week or so. So we'll we get them on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Fabulous. So <laughs> scary. Next, um, it's scary, but also fabulous because next Wednesday webinar, we'll be celebrating that with you. Um, yeah, make sure you log in and find out what we got. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> Bites nails. <laughs> Thank you. Then we're going to go to Becky, who is going to tell us another key member of the team. Becky is going to tell us about her number 20. Hi, uh, yeah. Um, so my connection to the number 20 is the way in which I describe them as I feel like I've had 20 light bulb moments during our webinars. And I really think it's because of the way that Siobhan and a lot of the guest speakers have just spoken so clearly in a way that really makes sense to me that sometimes books don't. And it's just really helped connect my way of linking theory to practice. Thanks, Becky. Thank you for that. Then we're going to go to Diana, who joined our team after we were so impressed by her when she was the student spotlight at the anti-racist webinar. So, Diana, you're number 20. Yeah, so my number 20 is related to my age. So I feel like when I was 20, which was only a year ago, <laughs> I feel as though I really grew into myself, which allowed me to come to terms with my purpose in life and how that kind of um, interlinks with social work. I feel like I became much more confident within myself. And I also started looking after my mental health a lot more. So that's how it links to 20. Thank you, that's great. Thanks, Diana. And then we're going to go to Kelly, who, as you know, always opens up our webinars every week, asking you what you had for your tea. And so Kelly and her number 20. Hi, everyone. Um, my link to the number 20 is even if it takes you 20 years, step out of your comfort zone. Um, that's OK. I started my first degree course uh, when I was 18. Um, I should have done and didn't. And um, I'm now 38. Um, so even if it takes you ages, that's okay. Thanks, Kelly. And then um, finally, but by no means least, we left Omar to do his number 20 till the end in case there were any tech issues, because as you know, Omar does our tech each week. So Omar and his number 20. Yeah, definitely a good choice, Siobhan. Thank you for that. <laughs> so yeah, um, my 20 is that I am 20 years old and I am proud to be a social work student. <clears throat> um, and also the fact that 2020, um, you know, this year as a whole has just been full of amazing opportunities that really shouldn't have been given to a first year social work student. But, you know, I, I'm just so grateful for everything that I've kind of achieved and done and been able to be a part of um, this year. And it's definitely going to be a year that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Omar. So that's the team, the team of students who came together when I just put a tweet out and said, does anybody want to help me do um, some webinars during the lockdown period? And we've carried on working together and I think we work together really well as a team. I value all of the team members as um, colleagues and now I'd, I'd hope to be able to call them friends. And so um, thank you very much for opening up and sharing your number 20. But what we're going to do now is go over to our guests. And this is where it now turns into a bit of a shared coffee evening, as the feedback said earlier. We've got some fabulous um, guests with us tonight who are going to share all kinds of eclectic ideas about social work, but all in some way 
will have something to do with the number 20. And we're going to start off with Diane. Diane has been um, at all 20 webinars and Diane is going to tell you something about uh, herself. So Diane, have you got your microphone on? It's over to you. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Hi, thank you for having me on tonight. Really a great pleasure. So yeah, so my connect connection is that it's my 20th webinar and um, I was just inspired to create a reflective model based on webinar 10. When we did um, reflective models, we had some great guests and it was just amazing to see what people created. So this is my um, reflective model. Now, I take no credit for the artwork on this. It's not my artwork at all. It's Rosie, that's Siobhan's daughter, um, drew this for me. But as you can see, it's not actually linked to social work. It was very much linked to a personal issue that I was going through, um, realising that due to injuries, I couldn't run anymore. Now, running for me had massive connections with running groups and, you know, people. And it was good for my sort of fitness and my mental health. So... At the same time, I think as Webinar 10 came on, it just got me to think, you know, what, what does this mean for me? So I sort of just used the run and the walk, you know, words and just sort of put in some questions, uh, the why, why was it happening to me? Perhaps my uncertainties, what it meant for me in forms of my sort of fitness, etc. cetera. Um, what could I learn? What knowledge did I need to do to find out about perhaps different forms of exercise? And then also just sort of next steps about what I could do because um, it was important for me to find something as opposed to running that I could do sort of as a fitness thing. So the outcome of that was, if we sort of move on to the next bit. So for me then, I sort of summarised it as, as running or walking. So yeah, I couldn't run. It, it just wasn't going to happen, but I could still walk. Um, I could still keep fit. I could still sort of, you know, form groups and connections with other people. So for me, the journey, it might be different, but the finishing line was the same. Um, so that reflection, while it's not actually social work, I, I have actually transferred over into some of my assessments. So it's, it's quite interesting. And I just think um, what it means for me, I think what I've learned from the webinars is about different use and different reflective models. Um, they're, not all, they're not all the same and they won't all work for sort of the type of work that we're doing. But I think it's just about being that creative and just trying different models. And also perhaps trying to sort of come up with your own model. I think there's a more connection. For me, there's a big connection to that because it's just got personal meaning and it means something to me. Um, and I think all of our reflective journeys are quite different, um, but we get to the same outcome. So I know as students, we learn a lot about Gibbs and Cole, but I find that, do, you know, do our reflections really go around in that cycle all the time? Perhaps not. Sometimes we sort of veer off into different directions. And, and, and again, like if you do your own model like this one, I don't have to follow it around in that cycle. I can just go out to different questions and just reflect in different ways. So yeah, that was, that was my sort of learning. I just sort of really appreciate the webinars. I just like go out, be creative, do your own reflective model. Thank you. Thanks Diane, that was fabulous. And, and webinar number 10 is one of my favorites as well still actually, because of the guests that we had, because of the models that people shared. And one of the things you know that I feel strongly about and I talk about at the webinars is that some of the models that were given are, they don't come from social work. You know, Gibbs doesn't come from social work. It doesn't have that social work context. And it's almost given to us as something that's done to us. And I think where you can create your own model and come up with an idea for yourself, especially when it comes from something that is so personal and was such a, I suppose, pivotal moment really for you, Diane, I think those reflective models work really well. So thank you very much for sharing that with us and sharing a little bit of your journey. I also just really love the idea and still promote for everybody that's here, I would still promote the idea of create your own model of reflection. So thank you very much for sharing with us, Diane. That was great. And so we're going to go now to Jade. Um, I'm hoping that Jade can switch on her microphone. Now, Jade is coming as a brand new student, just setting off on your journey, Jade, to becoming a social worker. So you've only just started your studies. I don't know how long ago, but are you going to tell us a little bit about starting your social work journey in 2020? 
Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, thank you so much to all of the uh, sort of panellists who have been running these webinars. They've been absolutely instrumental in my learning prior to me starting university uh, when I found them on Twitter, um, but also um, as I've begun on my journey. So I think I'm in about week four now. And uh, my link to 20 is that 2020 has changed my life. So the beginning of 2020 started much the same for me. I was working within human resources, a career that I'd been in for some time. And then everybody's life changed with the pandemic. And I was in, some would argue, an unfortunate, but also a somewhat fortunate position um, that I fell into the shielding category. So that meant I was, my whole life transitioned very, very quickly overnight. Um, and with that, it gave me an opportunity that I hadn't had before, an opportunity to slow down, and in effect, an opportunity to stop. Um, and with that came an opportunity to think and to reflect something that I had not been doing probably for 10 years. I'd been running at full, full speed ahead and I'd had a niggling feeling for a very, very long time that I wanted more. I wanted to do more, um, but I ignored it, actually. And it took a global pandemic <laughs> to stop me in my tracks and to enable me to really consider where I was going to go and what I was going to do. And with some conversations within my personal life, with some research, this idea of social work was born. And my kind of ideas, my thoughts, my way of working, I've always wanted, um, even in my previous career, to facilitate the growth of people, to facilitate what they can do, um, and to really support people in doing that. And the person-centered approach that is taken within social work was something that really resonated with me. And it's something that really drew me to think that actually this is absolutely, you know, the career for me. Um, and I just wanted to, I suppose, share some of my reflections so far in my journey, albeit very small, um, but things that I've found really, really valuable. Um, so the first one being that growth isn't always comfortable. Now, I know that from the very minute that I decided to apply, I was very uncomfortable and that feeling hasn't quite left yet. And some people tell me it never quite leaves because you're always... You know, to be to be the social worker that I want to be, I think I will have to continue to challenge myself, to continue to challenge my perceptions and to continue to learn. So likely I'm going to spend a lot of my time uncomfortable, but hopefully with good reason. Um, the other thing I found, which is probably more of a reminder to myself, but to anybody else that might find it useful, um, don't compare yourself to what you read in the group chat. <laughs> so whether that's your university group chat, whether that's your family group chat, you know, you need to work to your own time, your own goals and your own way, um, because the minute you compare yourself, you doubt yourself and you're likely to not be your authentic self. Um, and then always ask why. I think that includes to yourself. So why are you doing this? You know, that's a good question when things are tough to remind you why you're doing it and how to get through the tough times. But also when you're working with someone, you know, why have I taken this approach? Why have I gone at it from this angle? Because that will just help us to make sure that we are being really reflective just in our everyday conversations that we have, whether that is with a service user, whether that's with a lecturer, um, you know, why is it we are doing what we're doing? Um, and then the final thing, um, which is quite a personal one for me really, um, is just for us all to remember that people, circumstances and situations are more than just what we see with our eyes. And that actually one of the things that we have to remember more than anything is to listen and to not make assumptions. Because whether that's talking to somebody within your class, whether that's working with a colleague, whether that's dealing with a service user, you know, there is always more to what you see. So, for example, many people might look at me and not realise that I have Iranian heritage. You know, it's something that people often cock their head and they're like, but you're blonde and you've got blue eyes and you're fair skinned. Um, and that's just because, you know, that's that's the kind of the way it went. So for me, I... I feel that absolutely 2020 has changed my life for the better. And I'm really excited to see where this journey takes me and all of these people that I am coming to learn from, work with and, and enjoy this crazy journey with. Thank you, Jade. That, that was fabulous. Just starting your journey in 2020 and yet so full of being able to share with others about their learning journey. So thank you so much for that, Jade. Then we're going to go uh, to someone who is um, not just starting their journey, but has qualified 20 years this year. So we're going to go to Helen. Are you able to put your microphone on, Helen, and join us now? Should be on now, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm Helen Franklin. Um, as Siobhan said, I qualified in the year 2000, which was 20 years ago. Um, seems like a lifetime ago. So my current role, um, I've done a number of, of um, social work frontline roles, but my current work role is at Kill University and I predominantly do the practice learning side of things, which I absolutely love because actually it gives me a really broad view of social work, uh, much more than just the one particular job role that perhaps frontline practice does. Okay, so if you want to switch slides. I love this slide, Helen. I've got to just say, I just love the idea of this slide. So it's been trending on Twitter for about the last week, maybe fortnight, and I just thought I'm going to have a go at this. So how it started. So there's me aged, do I give my age away? Um, mid twenties, maybe um, a little bit older than that now, obviously. Um, sitting at my desk in my social work job. Um, not sure why I had my camera in the office. I probably wanted to finish a film off because obviously we didn't have smartphones in the year 2000. Um, so as you'll notice from my desk, there is quite a number of piles of paper there and there is no computer. Um, so it's a very, very different picture to how we are working now. Um, I think for me, when I first started my social work journey, my learning on my course had all been from my placements. My placements weren't kind of connected to anything other than just being within the team. So you learned from the team, you went into your first job, you learned from that team and who was there. But actually what was kind of missing and what I reflected back on in terms of what I've learned and, and how to and learning from other people much, much broader than actually. Um, I don't I would have... I don't know if it's just me, Omar, or is it just me that can't hear Helen or is Helen's connection she, being... She is starting to break up, unfortunately, and her camera's gone now. So we might be able to move on and then come back to her, maybe? Okay. Okay, so various sort of turns. Um, so, um, so from there, you know, I've, I've worked my way through different teams. Um, and I am, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to ignore the chat because I can see I'm maybe breaking up a little bit. Um, so, so my journey's kind of developed really. Um, and in 2008, I had a significant life event and I thought, kind of took a back seat a little bit um, and took some time out of frontline practice and that made me sit back and reflect really about what I wanted to do um, and from there um, I decided I was spending a bit more time with my family because by that point I'd started a family but I really couldn't I, I part of me sort of decided to walk away from social work at that point but within six weeks I'd registered on a practice educator course and was back in the, the driving seat because I was bored at home and I really needed something a bit more so I kind of went into independent practice education but that was the first step on my wrong of actually beginning to see people from different teams different organizations different um yeah, just from a, from a wider variety of people and being able to connect with them and actually really think about what is social work, not just what is the job I am doing. Um, and from there, I, I managed to get myself um, into the practitioner reference group on the social work task force. I'm not quite sure how I did that, but I managed to, to have a little crack at that, which was a national thing. Um, and then I've kind of gone into sort of workforce development, developing students, working with students and working you know in practice learning which gives me a really really broad overview uh, so the connect the connectivity for me is a really really important thing um, and I know that you know one of the reasons I'm here is because I should have put a call out on Twitter for has anybody um, been qualified 20 years and I thought you know yep that's me but actually I found Twitter itself inspirational just connecting with so many different practitioners from across the globe it's been you know it's been amazing Okay, so I'll leave it there, but that's kind of my story and that's my 20 years. So stay connected and learn from each other. Thanks, Helen. Um, I'm sorry we did lose you a little bit in the middle, but I just love that picture. of and, and I can remember the days where nobody had a computer, but I've been qualified 
uh, 30 years and I actually remember when every social work desk this is just it shows how much things have moved on every single social work desk had not only piles of paper like that but also had an ashtray on them even if you didn't smoke there was an ashtray on the desk and I just always feel like it must have why didn't it just go up in flames I mean it's just amazing so but thank you very much for sharing um that um that 20 years in five minutes it must have been really challenging to do that so thanks for that we're going to go then from Helen now working in practice learning we're going to go to somebody who is currently on placement and experiencing practice learning so Rosie are you there Rosie's going to talk to us about her experiences of practice learning in the year 2020. Hi everyone, so I am a second year master's student at Leeds Beckett and with the master's course you start basically both of your placements in one year. So my first placement started um, back in March and it lasted 16 days before it got cancelled due to Covid. The whole, every single placement in the universe pulled through so, the social work sector. Um, so we had to do this all alternative learning package and then it kind of added this extra pressure for coming to placement too like we did that first placement experience nobody knew what we were going into it was quite daunting um so placement two comes around i'm currently um in a locality safeguarding team um in the children and young people sector and i have my i'm five weeks in and so far my practice learning is all covid related so i have learned how meetings have gone virtual so you know strategy meetings and core group meetings are all done over skype now um i'm constantly texting teenagers because they don't like to answer the phone and don't really like to have you visiting so technology right now is my best friend um another thing i've noticed within 2020 with practice issues is a lot of social work working from home now as a student i don't feel that's very beneficial for me because i can't do a right lot at home um you know i can do online training i can read policies and procedures but for me, you know, it's really handy to be in the office and to be able to have those practice discussions around your cases and any direct work you're doing. So I'm quite lucky in the fact that I'm able to go into the office and still have that learning experience. Um, but no, as 2020 keeps going on, you know, practice is changing. I'm, you know, sometimes doing visits with masks on now. Um, I have yet to do a doorstep visit where we just literally stand at the doorstep if somebody is presenting with COVID symptoms. But I've got a feeling I will probably end up doing a few. Um, so, yeah, 2020 threw a curveball back in March, but practice has adapted um, in a big way. Um, I've noticed that through the social workers I'm working with and what I'm learning. Um, and I just reckon by the end of 2020 that my phone voice will be amazing because all I do is make phone calls rather than, <laughs> you know, doing a lot of other things. So yeah, 2020 is interesting, but on a positive note, um, as far as I'm aware, and Social Work England have stated that students don't have to make up the placement days that they lost out on because universities created alternative learning packages. So that is a good thing at the end of the day <laughs> but yeah that is my experience of 2020 so far it is that's great thanks rosie i tell you one thing i've noticed about i just think students are being so fabulous at adapting to new ways of working and the thing that i'd say is some students are feeling like oh i'm not getting um, a good placement because of that but actually what you're doing is you're learning the skills for the future you know because this is how we're going to be working for quite some time to come and also um you know even we're never going to go back to the way things were you know we've just seen haven't we that 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 how it was how it's going that helen shared with us and things are never going to go back to how they were so that's that's fabulous thanks very much for sharing that with us rosie so we're now going to go to jahan i'm hoping i pronounced that correctly jahan um and yeah, jahan that's fine talk to us about returning to social work in the year 2020 so thank you very much uh yes um my name is jahan and um basically 2020 has been the year that i've returned um to social work and realized my um, hope of returning to social work um i'm on the lga return to social work program and i was accepted on it so um that 2020 was a great um year for me and that um aspect um, I left social work in 2009 because uh, I just uh, basically needed a career change and I went back home to um, Sudan 
and there is no formal social work setting as such in Sudan as there is here in the UK. Um, wanted to mention that uh, some of the challenges in returning to social work is was basically trying to find a way an entry route to get back into social work. It's quite difficult um, if one hasn't kept their registration up and I didn't keep my registration up at the time. Um, and I think um, the solution really is for managers and local authorities to get on board and realize that um, social work, qualified social workers, social workers with experience are like gold dust and uh, should be encouraged to return back to the local authority. And there should be some, some way of um, giving them a placement, a supervised placement, which is one of the requirements of social work England. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Um, I just, uh, this picture here, uh, Nurture the Garden of uh, Loving Kindness, kind of reminds me of in, in, in this time that one should be compassionate and kind to themselves and also that um, a key part of social work is to be kind and um, uh, when working with people. So that's what I wanted to share really. Thank you, Jahan. Um, no, I think it's really interesting that um, aspect of return to social work and as you said about um, not keeping registration up. And I think, I don't know, would you agree with me that my advice to people would be wherever possible, keep your registration going. So even if you decide to take a little bit of time away from social work, do what you can to maintain your CPD and keep your registration going. Um, because I think that that makes things so much easier for you if you do want to return back into um, I suppose the working field. What, what would you think about that, Jahan? Would you agree to keep up registration where you can? I definitely agree because um, at the time I was registered with the GCSS, I think it was called, and um, it was just difficult to get back on it after my registration lapsed uh, for a year or so. It was just, uh, yeah, I needed really to be in a social work setting in order to get back. And then the HCBC came in and they had their own requirements. So yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, good to just keep that um, training going and keep that registration going. Yep. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, I did my registration the night before last, so I'm feeling pretty good at the moment. So um, <laughs> thanks for that uh, reminder there. There's probably a lot of people in the audience who need to do their registration over the next month or so. So thanks ever so much for sharing that with us. Thank and then you. we're going to go to um, Liana now, who is going to tell us. Um, so Liana, you're a student as well. Do you want to tell us what you wanted to share tonight? Yeah, um, so basically um, my passion is children who are looked after and care leavers. Um, this is a passion that's come from me, myself being a care leaver. Um, and one of the most important things I think we need to recognise and acknowledge in social work is around having a scheme or a service which is peer mentoring. Um, so I suppose when you're looking at the impact and the benefits for care leavers and people in care, it provides benefits to not only the mentor, but it provides to the mentee as well. And I just think with children who are looked after, there's a lot of professional power from the minute we walk into the life through how seeing the parents reacting to us walking in. And I think having that relationship with someone who can relate to what they've been through or what they're going through and to support them move forward and for someone to actually say, yes, I've been through this and I know how to help and support you to get through to the other side. So I think that's one of the main things that I kind of feel. I suppose the, like, the link to the 20s, 20 months ago, on my second year, I did actually think we need something. And as a social work student, how can I later on in my career help and inform other professionals about implementing this within social work practice? So yeah, I think that's one of the major things I feel. But yeah, thank you. Thanks, Liana. Um, I really agree with you about the importance of peer, um, 
peer schemes and peer relationships for um, looked after children um, and care leavers. I think it's so important. And um, I'd also like to say, I think this would be something that we'd be really interested in doing a full webinar on talking about the importance of peer schemes and maybe inviting you back to that, Liana, because I think this is something that's um, really important for us to consider. And I, I love the, um, the passion that you have and the understanding that you have about the power relationships um, and the power that we bring as social workers. And I think we can use that power to really good effect when we're conscious of it and we're aware of it. So thank you so much for sharing um, with us. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. And then we're going to go to Kerry. Now, I would say Kerry has been really active in the chat on previous webinars because I kind of <laughs> kind of knew Kerry could recognise Kerry's name from the chat. So, Kerry, we're going to go um, over to you and you're going to tell us as a newly qualified social worker in Scotland what you're going to share with us. Yep, so hi everybody. Um, as Siobhan said, my name's Kerry. Um, I am a very newly qualified social worker. I haven't even started my job yet. Um, and technically, I'm actually still a student as well, because although I've qualified with my postgraduate diploma, I'm still completing the dissertation in order to gain the master's qualification. So, <laughs> so I'm half newly qualified, half student. Um, so I'm going to share an experience um, a personal experience from 20 years ago, which actually came up in a supervision session this year. So my practice teacher had asked me to reflect on anti-oppressive and anti-discriminatory practice. And one of the questions that he asked me to focus on was any personal experience of stigma and discrimination. So I automatically thought back to 20 years ago when I was a uh, pregnant 17 year old still at school and I was walking up to English one day and I bumped into a senior member of staff on the stairs and he stopped me and said I just think it's time you left no hello no how are you just I think it's time you left um so obviously I, at the time I can remember feeling quite upset However, I hadn't thought about it for a very long time until my practice teacher asked me to reflect on, you know, stigma and discrimination. So I shared this example with my practice teacher and he responded by saying something along the lines of, that must have been awful for you. And immediately I felt really upset. I had a big lump in my throat. I was thinking, don't cry, don't cry. And I just took a big breath and said, made a joke and said, don't worry, I'm not going to cry. I dealt with all these feelings years ago. And straight after supervision, ran into the bathroom and burst into floods of tears. <laughs> um, so I reflected a lot on this experience for, for days and days afterwards. Um, and I learned so much from this experience about myself, um, about how I internalise feelings. I learned a lot about the importance of self-care. Um, I also learned about the importance of sharing your feelings with friends and colleagues. Um, but most importantly, I think the lesson that I learned from this, sorry, my headphone keeps falling, I'm just going to fix it. Um, I think most importantly, the lesson that I've learned is about the importance of drawing upon personal experiences to gain a better understanding of how the people that we are working with are feeling. So after I reflected on this situation that I'd been through of stigma and discrimination, I started to think, you know, wow, the people that I'm working with are feeling like this on a daily basis. And 20 years after this experience for me, I'm still bursting into floods of tears. Um, and it's not for me about my experience just of being a teenage mum. It could be about being a parent or a single parent. Um, you know, but it's about drawing on any personal experience and um, from all aspects of our lives. And, uh, you know, that can be really beneficial in our ability to support the people that we're working with. So for me, I feel like experiences, feelings and emotions are at the very core of all human interactions. And, you know, I think we must absolutely draw upon these in practice because at the end of the day, we're all human beings who are just engaging with other human beings. 
Um, you know, we've all faced adversities, we've all faced challenges, grief and loss, um, break down your relationships, you know, and we've all been through these kinds of experiences. So, you know, if we draw upon our experiences and can really tap into our feelings and emotions, I feel like that can make for really, really good social work practice. Um, so for me, I feel like Social work education is so focused on theory, research, knowledge, legislation, policy. And when we are encouraged to reflect, it's more often than not to reflect on how well we've done when we've engaged with somebody. And there's not a lot of focus on reflecting on yourself. And, it's, and I think that's a real shame because I think that can actually really add a lot to your practice. Um, so I should just one final point that I wanted to say, which is probably kind of stating the obvious, but, you know, this isn't about, you know, and sharing, you know, the most intimate details of your life with every single person that you're working with. Um, you know, we all need to consider professional boundaries. We all need to adhere to our code of practice and even reflect on things like the three P's that you've spoke about on several occasions, Siobhan. You know, but really drawing those experiences and bringing them into practice, you know, can be so beneficial for everybody that you're working with. So my, my kind of main message that I wanted to get across tonight, which I know is on one of the slides, is just never underestimate the value and the importance of drawing upon your personal experience and, and practice. So. Thank you, Kerry. That was, that was very powerful um, sharing there, I think, Kerry. Thank you. We definitely want to do a webinar on the use of lived experience and what we do and what we do share and how that can be useful to us. We definitely want to do that. Um, I was very struck, though, by you saying you were sitting in supervision thinking, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. And then you went off to the toilet to cry. Yeah. I would say as well, you know, as a practice educator, crying in supervision is OK. I mean, yeah. you know, it's not OK to cry in every session or to cry all the way through a session. But crying in supervision is OK. And I think there's lots of things as we're learning and as we're growing that we want to cry about. And that's yeah. okay. it was really it was actually really early on in placement. And I, I hadn't got to know my practice teacher very well at that point and certainly you know as the weeks went by um, I would have definitely felt comfortable speaking to me about more intimate details about myself but early on I think it was maybe week two or three and we were just getting going and he's like right think about anti-oppressive and anti-discriminatory practice you know and <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah thank you so much for sharing with us no, tonight Harry. thank you great. thank you and then we're going to go on to Jerry. So, Jerry, do you want to pop your microphone on? And uh, Jerry is chair of the British Association of Social Workers and is joining us now. Have you got your mic on, Jerry? Yes, I have. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's really great to be here, and congratulations on your 20th webinar. So, I'm here to talk about the 2020 vision for Baswell, which is kind of the perfect 20 topic. And it's also really wonderful because it's 20 years this month since I started my social work course. And that's a picture of me in Sheffield quite early on. Um, so I'm here to talk about Baswell's vision, which was set up five years ago to get us through to this year. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about it and then about where, where we're going next as well. So the 2020 vision was developed by social workers and it's one of the things that really inspired me into um, getting more involved in BASWA and it sets out that BASWA, the British Association of Social Workers, is the strong independent voice for social work and social workers and so I just wanted to talk about why association and fellowship and friendship kind of matters in social work. Social workers are um, sh have a shared purpose and a shared ethics uh, which is the same across the globe. So whichever country you're in, there'll be hopefully a professional body that will be part of the International Federation of Social Workers. And the International Federation sets out the purpose of social work and the ethics that we follow, which is around enabling people to change their lives, um, helping people um, uphold their human rights, uh, promoting social justice and looking after our own kind of personal and professional integrity. And the reason we come together to do that is because there's a lot of things that get in the way of that purpose and ethics if we're not careful. So, for example, um, policy change, changes of government, um, changes of social 
cultures and systems, political upheaval or economic um, problems. And in those kind of testing times, we need to hang on to our ethics and our purpose. And also we work with people who are really marginalized and often the voters or the people who make policy forget about them. So again, we have to kind of speak up for those people. So having an association helps us to come together and look after our ethics and our purpose in three really important ways. So we are able to support one another and that can happen through um, formal services like advice and representation, but also through peer support and having uh, the opportunity to talk to each other and kind of reconnect with what matters in social work. It also happens through strengthening our practice and primarily that's our practice as kind of ethical people and how we hang on to the, um, the best ways of empowering people and the best ways of upholding people's rights. And it also happens through us collectively campaigning and lobbying and challenging for change in our society. And the, the things that I really love about being in Baswa are related to that really. So I do feel that um, other social workers have kind of got my back. Also that there's a lot of friendship in the association um, and spending time with social workers. I feel like I get help with the kind of work that I'm doing and the way that I do it. And I also feel like it gives me the opportunity to challenge things that are wrong and to kind of try and stand up for what's right, but particularly to um, have, a long, have, a, have a stronger voice, a louder voice. And what we've, um, what we've got to, I think, over the last five years has been you know, reasonably far. Baz has been um, around 50 years now, and we're just celebrating our 50th birthday. So we've set a vision for the next five years, which is drawing on what we've done so far and really building on that. And it's about supporting social workers, um, helping our practice and campaigning and lobbying. But it's also, I think, a much stronger focus that's grown over the last few years around the equality and diversity and inclusion and making sure that an association is a place for everybody and that everybody has the opportunity to live up to the promise of social work and also much more about how we build alliances particularly with people with lived experience so that we can speak up together and be much stronger together. So I just kind of wanted to conclude with um, reflecting back on the 20 year anniversary that I've just had uh, so last week we had a virtual get together to celebrate and it really does um, emphasize the importance of the people in social work. So having people who will uh, help you out, also challenge you, but just really get why you're in this profession and what matters. So the message that I kind of leave you with is hang on to those people and really keep those relationships and build those relationships and hopefully all of you will be celebrating 20 year anniversaries or plurals of that, maybe 40 years, 60 years, who knows? And um, I'll certainly hope to keep in, in connection with, with my, my mates in Sheffield so that in 20 years time we can get together again. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that, Jerry. It's really interesting, isn't it, that uh, 20 years since you started your social work course, so it fell really well, actually, using the, the inviting you to speak for the 20th webinar. Mm. So thank you. For Fantastic that. time. Yeah, thank you. And uh, having been a, um, a member of Baswa since I was a student, uh, I really value the work that Baswa does. And I found particularly during the pandemic, the work that you did with the um, with the thinking paper, I think you called it on slow ethics that was done by Sarah Banks. I found that really, really helpful to revisit as a mm -hmm. practitioner. So thank you for talking about ethics uh, so clearly. Thank you, Jerry. So we're going to go on now to uh, Mary Ann. Are you, you? I can see you, Mary Ann. Do you want to unmute yourself? Hi, yeah. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so I'm Mary Ann. Um, I've managed to watch 18 of these webinars so far, but I did catch up on the other two, obviously, on YouTube. So just think that this time last week I was on that side of the camera, so please be kind. Um, so I'll start with a little bit about myself. So um, I'm a graduate this year of Portsmouth, so nearly qualified. Um, uh, and I'm currently working as a support worker in Cairns uh, in Hertfordshire. I've been there now for only four weeks, so I'm still learning the job. Um, as you can see by my 
lovely photos. Um, when I was 20, I joined the Navy. Um, uh, after leaving the Navy, I was a, I worked in administration for 20 years in various settings. Um, I worked at the NSPCC and saw practitioners really make a difference to children's lives. And I, although I really loved my job, I just wanted to do more. So I did. Um, so now that I've qualified, I've 20 years left of working if retirement age continues to be the age of 66. For women, it could go up, it could be 21, 22 by the time we're done, 25 maybe. Um, so having 20 years left is quite daunting because it seems a long time. Um, but um, that is why I, I decided to actually retrain and, and go back to education. Um, I wanted to do something that I felt was worthy and honourable, and even though I felt extremely nerv nervous to do it, and I wasn't academic at all, um, I didn't think I was academic enough to complete a degree, um, but I did. So um, I now actively encourage people to go back to education and fulfil their dreams, um, trying to be an, a good example and showing people that you're never too old to try new things, embrace the unknown and succeed in something you really didn't think you could do, you didn't believe in yourself to do. So, and I just live, keep telling people if I can do it, then really anyone can do it. Um, so in 20 years time, I want to look back and know that I've encouraged um, empowerment. And I've given people the opportunity to create their own opportunities um, and know that I've given people the correct tools to help themselves to achieve and to have the confidence to reach out for help, knowing that professionals do really care. Um, I want to be a good role model for all around me, not just the people that we work with, but for colleagues, friends and families. Um, so as a 2020 graduate, the year that will go down in history, uh, with 20 years ahead of me, I'm really excited and inspired to be the best social worker that I can be. Um, and I want to embrace the social work ethics and values, not just as a profession, but as a lifestyle. I think it's something I just really believe in and I'm loving my career. Thank you, mary -Ann. I really love that you want to embrace social work ethics, not just as a professional, but as a lifestyle. I just so fabulous. The voices that are coming through tonight from those who are new to social work are so inspiring. So Thank you uh, for sharing that. And you're quite right. 2020 is the year that will go down in history. And, uh, you know, you're going to be the first group of social workers to graduate in a global pandemic and to deal with and bring along all of those brand new skills that we're going to need for the future. So thank you. Thank you very much for sharing with us there, Marianne. That was great. And so we're going to go on now to um, Harry. And um, there's Harry's slide can you put your microphone on harry and yeah it's on it's on Shalom. thank you it's over to you then hello everybody um firstly congratulations to the organizers on this of you know this great webinar series uh, and for reaching 20. it's um really inspiring to hear everyone's inputs uh tonight um I suspect I'm probably the longest serving social worker here. I've been in the profession for 40 years now. Um, the last 30 of which I've been an academic and I'm now professor of social work at the University of Birmingham. Um, so I've had a great life in social work and there were many 20s I could have focused on. Um, but the 20 I do want to give attention to is what I'm calling 20 steps towards uh, good practice uh, in social work. Um, and I mean steps quite literally in the sense of focusing our attention on walking and moving. Um, and Siobhan has, with typical creativity, um, put some love, go, go back to the other slide, Siobhan. Oh, you put some lovely footsteps on the bottom of that slide to, to symbolize uh, what I'm talking about. So um, what I want to suggest is that the ways that social work practice is talked about and written about is very static. It's very sedentary. We hear a lot about social workers having to spend a lot of time in the office, sat with their computers, doing various kinds of admin, 
in terms of how social workers are, or sorry, service users are worked with, the dominant issue, uh, dominant image of, of social work and, 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 and service users is one where they tend to be sat down together or opposite one another, engaging in an interview. So there's a lot of attention on social work courses, obviously, for instance, to interviewing skills and so on. Fair enough. Um, but I want to sort of get us to think a bit differently about this. And for the last 10 years in my research, I've been shadowing social workers. I've been observing practice. And I've been paying attention to how do social workers and service users actually interact with one another. Um, so here's an example of what 20 steps can achieve. Uh, so you can go to the next slide now, Siobhan, thank you. Um, so what I do is I observe social workers, like for instance, on home visits, and I, I write down, I take notes of what I'm seeing. So this was a visit to a home where there were four children, and there were particular concerns about a 10-year-old boy who I'm calling Kevin, all names have been changed. Um, and one of the social workers' aims on this visit was to see Kevin on his own. So here's what I wrote of, from in my field notes after the visit. Some 10 minutes into the visit, all the children began moving around the sitting room and flowing in and out of adjacent rooms. And after 45 minutes of the visit, they were once again in the sitting room where the social worker and parents were sat. But Kevin wasn't in the sitting room. Realizing that he was next door in the dining room on his own, the social worker asked uh, the parents if she could go into the next room to engage with him. They didn't answer, but she got up anyway from the settee and she joined him. On entering the dining room, the social worker closed the door and immediately got down onto the floor beside Kevin. She engaged him about the activity that he was involved in, which happened to be drawing, and he spoke to her fluently and they did touch on some of the family issues that she was concerned about. She spent seven minutes alone with him, gave him a smiley face sticker at, at the end and initiated a high five with him. Um, now, while this period of time that was spent with Kevin was quite short, given that his parents and indeed some of Kevin's own initial resistance, um, afterwards the social worker told me she was pleased that she got to see him alone at all and that he talked to her. So what I'm suggesting is that this was not only due to the social worker's communication skills, but just as importantly, her agility, her purposefulness and her willingness to move. The social worker was alert, alert enough to see the opportunity to move and speed up, at which point by going next door, she prevented a situation um, where he could have come back into the sitting room and that would have effectively blocked her ability to go next door and see him on his own. So there you have it. By following this social worker as they took these 20 steps, it was 20, I counted them up. You've got to believe me. Um, <laughs> 10, into the, 10 into the dining room and 10 back again. Um, we're able to see the creativity, the improvisation, and the skills that social workers use all the time. And how this can involve not only being sat down and being still as it's you know, relevant and important to be sometimes, um, but also the importance of movement. And what I suggest is that this enables us to reach a better understanding of what makes best practice in social work and what makes social work such a helpful and effective profession. That's it. Thank you, Harry. Do you know, it's so funny that you've ended with what makes social work uh, such a helpful uh, profession, because from my perspective, your research on social work is so helpful and so positive. Um, I think the fact that your research is always so close to practice, it's always so practice based, but also 
it values social work and that comes through in everything that you write about social work is the way that you value social work and um, during the pandemic I've been revisiting some of your writing and actually one of your early blogs about thinking spaces prompted some of these reflections so we definitely some of these webinars sorry um, so we've quoted you quite a lot in the webinars so we were so pleased mm. that you were able to come and join us tonight so thank you so much uh, for sharing that with us thank you thank you Siobhan it's been a real it's a real pleasure to be here honestly it's a real privilege thank you thanks Harry thank you and so we're going to go on now to um Callie who is uh going to I don't know if Callie if you're being joined live by the lizard because you were earlier on I don't know if he's gone for a walk now or if he's sitting on your shoulder but it's over to you the microphone's yours Callie no, no, he's here. He's been uh, sat on my lap. He's had a little. He's having a little doze at the moment. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm Callie. I'm newly qualified uh, social worker this year. Currently working in mental health. Um, I'm very much like Kerry as well. So I'm doing the master's degree. So I've got my postgraduate diploma this year. I qualified a couple of weeks ago, and I'm going to be doing my master's dissertation alongside my ASYE this year. So yeah, it's been difficult during the pandemic. Um, but my path to qualifying has been quite a long one. So uh, 20 years ago, uh, I started college. I know what you're all thinking. I clearly look way too young for that to be 20 years ago. Um, and I said, I really want to help people. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I want to help people. I want to make a difference to people. And they said, brilliant. Go on the nursing course then. That's obviously where, where you, you lie. I was like, OK, great. You're a career advisor. You must know. So I, I did the pre-nursing, which was uh, like an A-level standard, and then I got onto the university course and realised that as a college student, I'd been afforded more time to talk to you know, their patients, the people they were working with, because they don't get the time. It was just far too clinical for me. It just wasn't right. So I, after a year at the university, I did leave. Um, and I felt really bad about this, like I'd failed somehow, or this wasn't what I was going to do. So I went and worked at the job centre, I did four years at the job centre then and I saw so many different walks of life, so many different people. And it was a great opportunity as well to challenge things like employers and how they saw other people as well. And you you really felt part of the community. But I think after four years, I, I'd sort of had enough and I wasn't doing what I felt was enough. It, it, I didn't quite feel like as somebody said it, I didn't quite feel at home yet. Then I found a job in social services. It was a fixed term contract. So I left my permanent job to go for this two year fixed term contract. I absolutely fell in love. I stuck my finger in as many pies as I possibly could. So I made sure that I was the admin there. And back in the day, social workers used to write out all their assessments and we'd have to type it up, which probably takes like literally twice as long, but I did. I really, really went on and I was like, oh, do you panel assessments? I really want to see what that's like. Can I come shadow on this? Does anyone mind if I do an extra hour today? Cause I'd really like to go on that visit tomorrow and see what it's actually like. And I. I absolutely fell in love with it and I started looking into it and I got a lot of support from other social workers there saying yep you should do it you should do it I looked into it because I had a mortgage and I had bills to pay and things I couldn't do the normal university route um I had tried I went to university open days it just wasn't going to be feasible so I looked into the open university again couldn't quite do the the social work degree because you need employer sponsorship but I was so determined I was going to do this I looked into what else can I do? So I got some advice and I've gone the long way around. So I did a degree in health and social care. That took me six years in total to complete. And during that time, I worked at a care agency. Um, and that the idea of that was to link theory and practice together. Um, so I saw and I worked as admin. So I did the staff training, staff rotors, dealt with families, dealt with the invoices, dealt with the council. But mornings, evenings and weekends, alongside doing this degree, I did the care work as well to go and see you know, the service users, how it felt with them, share their experiences and learn a lot from them. And I would often ask like, extra questions because I usually have longer than everybody else. How does this feel? What's happened in your life? How have you got here? And I found that really interesting. And then I moved to the hospital because my uh, degree started using guidelines and started talking about policies. So I wanted to find out what was that like. So um, I joined there, started to find out what it was like on the guidelines team, dealing with complaints, governance, high risk case reviews, serious case reviews. 
But a little glimmer of hope came when somebody emailed me and said, there's a job over in a different team we'd really like you to apply for. And I became a social care assessor, um, which is like, for anybody who's not so sure, is like the unqualified version. And I, I absolutely felt at home suddenly. I graduated during that time. And I think all the experience I had along the way really helped me with that learning with the knowledge, I could I could share that with my teammates as well, explain about how benefits work, explain how the hospital guidelines work. And when the opportunity for Think Ahead uh, came up, which is one of the fast track schemes, there was no other way of doing it, clearly. Uh, I went straight for it and I qualified earlier this year and it's been absolutely amazing. I've just joined a new mental health team where somebody actually asked me, Oh, so how when how long ago did you qualify then? Oh, you've been doing older, older people. I was like, no, I just qualified a few weeks ago. But all the experience I had beforehand really helped feed into the team. And it's been good to share that with them. And I think my advice to everybody is as well, there's no singular way of doing things. There's no linear route for everything. If you want to do it, you absolutely can do it, whether it takes you 20 years or two years, it doesn't really matter. And I think we need to apply that to our service users as well and think actually their experiences have led them to this point where they are now. Everything they've done is so important and we need to value that the goals that they want to achieve are achievable, whether it takes them two years or 20. Thanks, That's Kelly. It. That, that was really interesting, just that whole journey. And do you know what I was captured by? And it's just made me think how everything seems to connect together in my head. You're talking about your careers advisor telling you to go off and be a nurse. I remember going to my careers advisor when I was 14 and saying I wanted to do this, this and this. And they told me to join the Navy. I don't know why they <laughs> told me to join the Navy. I couldn't even swim. And then I was thinking earlier, well, Mary, I was in the Navy. Maybe that would have been a route in. I don't know. But anyway, I didn't I didn't take the careers advice. Um, so thank you ever so much for that, Callie. That was fabulous. And so we're uh, we're whizzing on through our tonight's speakers and we're going to go to Joel now. So Joel, do you want to put your microphone on? It's your turn. Hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Joel Price. Um, I'm a, currently a duty social worker within um, Cardiff Children's Services. Um, and today I'm going to talk about 2020 being the year of uncertain surprises because I set out on 2020 with having lots and lots of plans to go and travel and to kind of grow in my career. But then uh, the coronavirus hit and it kind of sprung up lots of uncertain surprises for me. One of the biggest surprises that I had from 2020 and I'm still kind of going through is connections. And I know lots of people have spoken about connections recently, but one of the biggest connections that I've had through this pandemic was Becky Salter, who is part of the, um, the, the Connect team, who has introduced me to a world um, of others and a world of professionals and other students, newly qualified and allied professionals. And that's through something that we all know, which is Twitter. And for me, Twitter has kind of transformed the way that I engage as a social worker, as I engage as a human being, and most of all, as you know, how I engage as just Joel. Um, and it's allowed me to kind of meet many, many different like-minded people, many different um, walks of life and really kind of understand that social work is the most purest of all human professions. And I will stand by that always. Um, so talking about Twitter, that's kind of for me reiterated kind of what social work means for me. So connections in social work really does underpin our practice, kind of our engagements and our interactions with the children that we work with, the families that we work with, service users, our allied professionals, our colleagues, our friends. Um, and it's kind of taught me about the connection with myself and the immediacy of connections with others. So what this pandemic and what this year of uncertain surprises has taught me is that we have to have a connection with ourselves and we can't do our job effectively and we can't do our job, you know, the best to the best of our ability if we're not connecting with us and with, you know, with you and with, with me. So for me, it was about how I show myself more kindness, how I focus more on my emotional and physical well-being, how I connect kindness to others, how I connect it on a personal level, a professional level, on an inter-agency level, and most of all, how I connect that kindness to myself. Because 
the pandemic and being on the front line in the pandemic has brought incredible challenges has taught me what it really means about resilience has taught me what it really means about reflecting on and in practice and just reflecting about me and how I am as a human being and how I see myself which leads me on then to talk about the professional and personal understanding and what I want to tell everyone is that when you start to go out and see your careers and you start to be the social worker that you've dreamt of and the social worker that your lecturer tells you you have to be first of all you'll forget about yourself and you'll forget about how important you are and you'll forget about the importance of what you mean to you because you're so engulfed in all of this all of the riches that come with the most incredible profession that we're all finding ourselves in but then you forget about yourself and last night it kind of sang true to me so myself and Becky um, kind of work on the communities of practice in Wales with BASWA as we both sit on the committee for BASWA um, and, and someone who joined the community of practice last night said that she's not got time for herself because she's trying to do study and she's trying to research she's trying to start as, as you know as a student social worker and she said she's only got time to cook chicken and rice and for me that was just a mind-blowing moment because that that was me that was me before the pandemic that was me back in the day where I had no time for me. I was giving, 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 and that was making me crash. So what I've learned and what I wanna tell you guys is just remember to be kind, take time for yourself, know your limits, and honestly feel that it's okay because every day is not gonna be okay. When you're studying, when you're going into supervision, when you're going onto your first placements or your final placements, when you're going into a crisis moment like I deal with every single day, it's not going to be okay. We can plan, we can prepare, we can reflect, but it's not always going to be okay. And you know what I've learned, and thank you, Corona, but it's okay not to feel okay and not to feel in control because that's life. And our families go through that every single day. Our families are never in control. The people that we work with aren't always in control because our system is oppressive at times. And, you know, and there's many things that oppress our families. So it's making sure that they know that they can also be in control and making sure that we're advocating for their own journeys and our journeys too. And one last thing before I finish up is please take the surprises from the uncertain moments because although in that moment we feel scared and we feel frightened and we feel lost and we feel just overwhelmed, something great is gonna come out of it. It's just gonna take a little bit of time and it's just gonna take that patience and that understanding of, actually, it is gonna be okay and I'm, I'm fine with that. It's just not okay today but I know I'm going to get there. So keep connecting, keep listening, keep sharing and keep being kind to yourself because that is the most important thing I can tell anyone in social work is just be kind to you. You can't be, the, you can't be a good social worker if you're not kind to yourself. So thank you very much and thank you for listening to my, my share and my journey and my connections, I guess. Thank you, Joel. That was fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing that. And actually, although there was no particular running order for tonight, it takes us really well into our final uh, couple of speakers. So as a Social Work Connect Student Connect team, one of the things we've really enjoyed about these webinars is how we've been able to connect with uh, students from all over the world and perhaps one of the loveliest things has been how we've met with people and people have emailed us and we've met with them and uh, we're going to hear now from Sana and this is a picture taken from quite early on I think we'd only done about two or three webinars and Sana contacted us um, talking about social work being very new in her country and Sana is going to talk to us just for five minutes but we're hoping Sana will come back for an international webinar and we'll talk about social work all over the world because I think there's so much for us to learn but Sana is going to talk to us about social work in Kurdistan so thank you Sana it's over to you. Uh, hello how are you? Hi everybody. I'm Sana Mohammed in Kurdistan, which is a part of Iraq. Um, I was a four-year social work student. I finished this year. Uh, I graduated in one month ago in social work degree. And now I'm working with Chapuk organization. I'm a social activist and working as a volunteer for five years ago at government institution and NGO organization. And now I work with Chapek organization as a social work for human development, the main office in the Netherlands. And I am ambassador of Global Peace Chain. 
I want today I want to talk about the social work situation in Kurdistan. In Kurdistan, social work science is developing because it was a new science in our society, and they were a new science in us. Uh, in Kurdistan, social work science is a developing because it was a new science in our society, and they were not a familiar with it. But fortunately, they efforts continue to develop and develop. The, th the social work department, it is as a university, is constantly working and projecting to raise the level of the department's science by working in cooperation with foreign universities, especially Applied Science University in Germany. As a teacher work and a group of students working with international organizations, our teachers are trying very much in the process of developing. The department and the education systems has become Bologna systems in this years. I'm closely aware. Um, okay. I'm closely aware that students' enthusiasm for the job is at a very good level and students continue to work with the volunteer and institution and organization to get experience and learn. As practicing the profession in part of institutions such as hospitals and schools, reform cells, social care and courts, and some NGO organizations have also been made relatively well facilitated to work and coordinated people. But of, of course, we have a lot of shortcomings and problems there are many obstacles in front of the job, but I can say that because we know that all society need, needs the science, we are constantly trying to improve it, and we will raise to scientific level of social work department in every way, and we will continue to do so. I end up talking, and I want to thank you for listening to me, and I think you have benefited all. Thank you for everyone. Thank you, Sana. Thank you. It's amazing to think that we can connect. And, uh, sorry. I'm just saying it's amazing to think that we can connect with a social worker who has just graduated. Sorry, sorry I can't. I can't. Oh, can you not hear us, Sana? We can hear you. We can hear you. So I. We can hear you. Shiba. Yeah, um, Omar, can you type in the chat for me to Sana? <laughs> because I can't type in the chat. Can you That's type fine. in the She's chat? She's on hold can... now. Okay, just type in the chat that we can, we heard her all the way through. Um, the, obviously, technology hasn't gone with us all the way. But, you know, it's amazing, isn't it, to think that we've just heard from someone who has just graduated in a global pandemic in Kurdistan, in a place where this is the first year that social workers have graduated in Kurdistan. It's so new in that country and social work isn't really government supported in Kurdistan. We've learned a lot from Sana about how social work is mostly done in, she's put down their NGOs, it means voluntary organisations, non-governmental organisations. And we're very much, we're so pleased that Sana was able to join us despite we've had a few technological issues, but to learn about social work in an area of Iraq that we would never have known about before has been an amazing aspect of doing these webinars. And we have had social workers join us from all over the world. And next year, we want to look at putting together a webinar where social workers talk about their journeys in different countries, because there is such a lot that we can learn from social workers in other countries. And our final guest tonight is Saeed. Now, Saeed has joined us um, every week in the webinars. And so you always, if you're a, a regular attendee, you'll know we always go, oh, here's Saeed to come from Pakistan again. And Saeed has joined us tonight. I think, Saeed, you weren't going to share anything tonight, were you? You were just going to say, something about the webinars, were you? Uh, th thank you so much, uh, uh, Shivan and the uh, whole uh, student connect team. Uh, I'm student of BS Social Work last year, uh, uh, University of Sargodha from Pakistan. Uh, I'm proud to be a student of social work. I just said thanks to Shivan, uh, Biki, Kelly, uh, and whole team uh, student uh, connect 
uh, for uh, this opportunity of webinars, uh, especially during uh, lockdown in Pakistan. I learned many things uh, these uh, webinar series uh, and uh, also meet uh, different and great uh, uh, social worker students and students. In Pakistan, uh, social work considered as a, uh, as a charity uh, able or as a um, uh, the department of charity uh, uh, and uh, during my during my uh, uh, webinar uh, during during my sessions i learned many things about social work uh, and i uh, i appreciate all of uh, those team and i share with my uh, my 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 class, classmates my teachers uh, in pakistan this is very very important all these things in universities or co colleges uh, implementation of these these, these things because uh, now world is a global village and uh, we uh, learn uh, in these uh, way like webinar zoom meetings webinar and i am really really grateful to be here and uh, thank you so much everyone and thank you so much shivan and whole team of uh, student connect team. Thank you so much. Thank you, Said. We're uh, we're really privileged that you've joined us for all of the webinars, and we hope that um, next year, when we bring something together about understanding social work in different countries, that you will um, spend more time with us and tell us more about social work in Pakistan, because I think we can all learn a great deal from other countries. So. Thank you so much. We are uh, coming right close to the end of our time together this evening. So what I just want to say is thank you so much to all of our guests tonight. So there have been 20 panellists tonight. That is amazing to get through that and for everybody to bring their voice. One of the things we hope that we're doing in these webinars is helping us to all think about a vision for the future of social work. We're in a very changing, very challenging time at the moment. And we really do need to think about the future of social work. What will social work look like in 20 years time? And to do that, we need to bring a whole range of different voices together. So from someone who has just started her journey into social work, who is four weeks into her training, to new social workers, to people who are returning to social work, to students, to someone who's been qualified for 20 years, to Harry, who's been a social worker for 40 years and brings such rich research to our practice now. Those voices need to come together and we need to think about our future vision. So we have 20 messages from our panel tonight, which I'm going to run through very quickly, but these are the messages from our panel. Your voice counts, whether you're an academic or a student, whether you're a social worker or whether you're returning to practice, your voice matters. Your journey is uniquely yours. Don't make comparisons with others. Remember why you wanted to be a social worker and keep on tapping back into that motivation to be the difference. In fact, constantly ask yourself why. It's a powerful question in lots of different circumstances. Connect with others. There's a great big world of social work out there that we can learn from. Never underestimate the value of personal experience in social work practice. Social work isn't just what we do, it's who we are. Use every single learning opportunity that's open to you along your career journey. Keep in touch with friends from your social work course because they're an amazing support system through your career as a social worker. Being a skilled, helpful practitioner involves using body as well as mind, moving as well as being still in finding ways of creatively engaging people. All of our reflective journeys are different. Be creative. Be kind. Be kind to others, be kind to your families, be kind to service users, your colleagues, your friends, your own family, and most of all, be kind to yourself. There is no singular way of achieving your dream or your qualification, whether it takes two years or 20 years. 
step into someone's shoes and try to understand what it's like for them. Reflect on your practice and don't be a martyr. Never underestimate the importance of listening in your social work toolkit. Try stepping out of your comfort zone and share things. If it takes you a while to do that, it's okay. Always remember that social workers are in a powerful, privileged position to impact positive change in people's lives. Utilize the power of teamwork, peer support and coming together. These webinars have removed a layer of isolation that we've all felt during 2020. Look for the joy in your role. Even the smallest things to you can make the biggest difference to the person that you're working with. And 2020 has been a year of lots of uncertainty, but you know, social work is all about uncertainty and we can do this. There are 20 messages. I'm not gonna tell you who submitted each one, but all of our messages are in there. There are messages about the future of social work. We've had a really great night tonight celebrating our 20 years. And we know that some of our previous guests are in the audience tonight and watching in. And these are our guests across our 20 webinars. We have been joined by some fabulous, wonderful guests. And if you've been with us before, hopefully you can find your picture on that collage, which has been very artistically done um, by Kelly for tonight's session. Um, but in celebrating the 20, we don't want you to think this is the end and we've just done 20 and, you know, we were celebrating them and it's all over. We've got loads of webinars to come up and some fabulous guests. So I know that the link for next week's webinar will be being put into the chat now, as we usually do. I think Omar and the team putting it into the chat. Next week, we're going to be looking at practice placements and we've got a special guest, Joe Finch. And you can see all of the other webinars are there. We've only got a couple of moments left in fact we're running slightly late we normally finish for 8 30 but anybody who is still here who would like to have their cameras switched on if you want to put your hand up i think omar and the team are going to do something technological i don't know what that is but if you want your cameras on if you've been before you know we sometimes do this at the end of a webinar so that we can see everybody and we can just wave to one another. So if you want to have your camera switched on, we've got 23 participants with their hands up already. Just stick your hand up and you can come and join us tonight. So thank you so much to all of our special guests tonight. I have been just, there have been times where I've wanted to laugh and times where I've wanted to cry tonight. Some of the things that you have shared have been wonderful. Thank you so much to everybody. And I can see there's 35 hands up and there's so many people on screen now. So I'm hoping that everybody can see people as you join in. I'm seeing people waving. I'm